Welcome everyone. This is Patricia from the International Hospital Federation. I hope you're all safe and well and thank you very much for joining us today. We at the IHF are hosting this COVID-19 webinar and live Q&A series to share experiences, good practices, insights, and recommendations from our members and other organizations from across the globe. The series has been created for healthcare providers, including decision makers and those involved in preparing for and managing COVID-19. We hope the lessons you take away from this session will help you in facing the crisis. I would now like to introduce the moderator of this webinar, IHF CEO, Eric Derudenbeck. Eric? Yes, uh, thank you, Patricia. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Uh, welcome, everyone, to today's webinars that will allow us to share the experience from Italy. As you may know, Italy was the first European country that was massively hit by COVID in a quite sudden and brutal way with major strain on hospitals, especially in northern part of Italy, where COVID has struck the most. There has been several webinars available online reporting how teams have responded to this situation of extreme demand of healthcare and uh, lack of resources. We have now seen also in all the media how these teams have been very innovative with adoption of what we can call low-tech solution using, for example, a snorkeling mask for oxygen therapy. This has been very, very much uh, um, uh, shared all over the world. Now that the peak of the epidemic is behind and the teams are less under this immense pressure, it is also time to better understand what we can learn from this crisis and especially how the local players at the level of hospitals have organized themselves. Looking at these various responses can allow to identify potential uh, uh, advancement in organizational setup and governance. And this is the, the, the approach and the work that uh, our today's speakers will be covering today. It's really a great pleasure for me to introduce you Americo Cicetti, Professor of Healthcare Management at Università Cattolica del Sacro Cuore, Faculty of Economics in Rome, Italy. He is the director of the Graduate School of Health Economics and Management, Altems. By the way, we work with this school, especially on the professionalization of healthcare management. Chief of uh, Research, Health Technology Assessment Unit and Biomedical Engineering at a Gemelli University Hospital, Roma, Italy also, and visiting researcher at the Center of Medical Education and healthcare of Thomas Jefferson University, Philadelphia, USA. Americo, the floor is yours, and we're really looking forward to listen to your experience and research. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Eric. Thank you very much to all of you, to IHF, for uh, this opportunity to share with you some of the experiences uh, uh, that we have done during this uh, dramatic event uh, that, uh, as you have said, um, uh, has beaten hardly uh, our, um, our country. And um, uh, we think that uh, really is important uh, to share uh, with, uh, with others these, uh, uh, the, the experience that, uh, uh, are, uh, that we have done. Um, in Italy, but also in many other countries. So I think that uh, this initiative of uh, IHF uh, is very appropriate and very and very useful. Um, I'm going to show you some of uh, the analysis that we have done, uh, thanks to a very large uh, research group that uh, uh, from uh, the end of February um, actually started to. Uh, to, to work together, uh, try to uh, um, understand which kind of response uh, uh, our uh, regional health authorities, uh, our regions, uh, uh, were providing uh, with the, at the, regarding the emergency uh, related to the diffusion of uh, uh, the coronavirus in, uh, in our country. Um, it's a very large research group, uh, multidisciplinary, so we have uh, healthcare managers, we had uh, 
uh, uh, uh, also public health physicians, medical engineers, uh, and so on. Uh, but first, I would like to give you a very quick background about Italy, Italian healthcare uh, system, because it's very important uh, to understand our institutional setting to uh, um, also uh, to uh, have the right learning from this experience, uh, our goals, our methodologies, and some evidences. And just to discuss with you at the end, uh, trying to uh, take some uh, uh, take-home messages. Okay, background. We, uh, uh, as you probably know, have uh, um, uh, a, a system uh, that uh, has been struggled uh, uh, toughly uh, from this uh, uh, this pandemic event. Uh, it has been uh, really a human uh, tragedy. Thirty-two thousand deaths. Uh, by by now, and the Italian healthcare system uh, arrived uh, at this uh, at, uh, at the end uh, of uh, January. Uh, actually, uh, under some pressures, we are facing a demographic evolution. We are the oldest country in the world uh, uh, after Japan. Uh, some epidemiological challenges uh, with uh, a strong uptake of uh, a chronic, uh, multiple chronic condition uh, in this uh, population, may, mainly by elderly. Um, the system has been underfinanced for more than 10 years, uh, so uh, we are working a uh, very tough financial pressure, and uh, we are experiencing a lot of uh, regional differences from north to south regarding the governance, the organizational models, uh, the availability of uh, major resources, for example, ICU beds, uh, competencies, uh, and also we have seen, uh, we are experiencing uh, uh, significant differences in the performance. Um, the goals, uh, our goals is really to better understand uh, uh, the, um, the implications of uh, the application of the same rules that has been issued at the national level um, uh, uh, applied in uh, uh, by our uh, regional health uh, uh, authorities in order to understand what uh, uh, what has worked out and which errors sh should be avoided in the future but also uh, we think that it is important also to have a long range uh, uh, learning uh, to to change to make uh, the healthcare system uh, more uh, uh, re resilient um, over time um, he, the story is starting more or less uh, on the beginning of March, uh, when the Ministry of Health, supported by the Scientific Task Force, uh, has issued some guidelines for uh, regions. Um, and the guidelines uh, were giving an indication regarding uh, uh, how to manage diagnostic text uh, to understand the presence uh, of, uh, uh, of the virus. And mainly the idea was to uh, uh, create a priority testing symptomatic patients mainly at hospital, in, in the hospitals, uh, in the emergency rooms, uh, and uh, uh, as a second priority, the policy symptomatic uh, clinical uh, cases. Um, uh, of course, uh, some uh, categories such as uh, uh, healthcare workers uh, and, uh, for example, policemen, whatever, and, and other kind of, uh, uh, of workers uh, uh, should be prioritized to, uh, to, to, for the test. Sec uh, uh, second point, uh, uh, the region were asked to reorganize their hospital network, uh, uh, increasing the number of ICU beds of 50% uh, uh, and the number of beds dedicated to pneumology and infectious diseases of 100%. Also, uh, the national guidelines uh, asked regions to establish the, uh, what they have called special continuity care units. Um, uh, these are teams made by uh, uh, physicians and, uh, and nurses uh, to monitor patients mainly at, uh, at home. Um, and also to look at uh, symptomatic people, uh, trying to understand uh, if they were uh, COVID cases or, or not. Uh, the guidelines uh, um, were asking re regions to, um, to, to, to activate the family doctors' uh, networks. Uh, the family doctor in the Italian NHS uh, is uh, uh, as a... a, a, a 
a contract, uh, so he's an independent uh, uh, worker in the system, uh, as happens, for example, in, uh, in UK. And they are connected to these local health units that are the uh, operational level of uh, our uh, national health system. Uh, regarding the intermediate care, uh, the guidelines uh, suggest uh, give a suggestion to uh, regions uh, uh, to use hotels and other pro properties in order to accommodate people under medical uh, uh, surveillance. Um, of course, uh, since uh, in Italy the regions, uh, as I said, uh, really they, they have a, a huge autonomy in uh, managing their own uh, healthcare systems, uh, uh, the application of these guidelines uh, um, uh, was very, very different. And so from uh, uh, March the 21st, uh, uh, we started to issue a weekly a report uh, that was uh, uh, um, looking at uh, the different ways uh, of applying same guidelines uh, in, uh, uh, in the Italian territory, in the different uh, regions. As I said, we had uh, this multidisciplinary working group uh, and we have researchers uh, helping us uh, uh, and also healthcare managers from 10 out of 21 Italian uh, regions. Uh, what we have done is to uh, give uh, to create a set of indicators and actually we have used two different sets of indicators one for the phase one the phase one was the harder phase of the contagion uh, was the period of the, the full lockdown of the country phase two started uh, uh, recently from may 4th and is the moment in which we are reopening businesses and activity and uh, uh, also the mobility is uh, more and more free because people now is free to move uh, within the same region, not region to region, but uh, mm, we are experimenting the impact of uh, this new uh, situation. On the base of uh, these indicators, uh, and also looking at the national, regional, local legislation, we have tried to understand uh, which kind of models uh, 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 the different regions were following. All the data uh, came from uh, official uh, uh, databases uh, provided uh, by the Italian Civil Protection and Ministry of Health and the National Agency uh, of uh, uh, Drugs, AIFA. Uh, okay, our evidences. Uh, at first, I would like to give you an idea of the national epidemiology and the national response. As I said, uh, we have uh, you know, a, a, a full understanding of uh, uh, the, the, the legislation milestones, and don't, I don't want to go through, but uh, uh, there are some dates that are very important. Uh, the national emergency is January uh, 31st. Uh, the first case in Italy is February 20, 21st. The lockdown of uh, uh, the uh, northern regions, uh, Lombardia, Veneto, Emilia, Romagna, and Marche is of February 23rd, March 1st. Uh, is the date of uh, the indication provided at the national level to the regions to reorganize their uh, hospital and community network. Uh, the schools were closed on March 4th. From March 9th uh, started the national lockdown that has been closed uh, in, on May, uh, May 4th. Uh, this is the world picture, what happened. Um, as I said, uh, almost 32,000 beds. We have the peak of the cases uh, on April 20. Now we have more recovered, of course, that uh, uh, COVID cases uh, in the in the country, and the situation is going, uh, you know, better and uh, and and better. As you can see, May 4th, uh, uh, actually May 5th, is the, the moment in which the number of recovered uh, recovered uh, uh, overcome the uh, the number of cases. So of course, is uh, very. Uh, positive uh, uh, the number of uh, yes of uh, positive cases uh, the, 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 it was a very good, uh, good new and also a very good timing to close the the, uh, the lockdown um, this is the general uh, healthcare system response as you can see at the, in the initial part uh, the vast majority of patients were hospitalized more than 50 percent many of them in the ICUs little by little we started to manage patients at home uh, and uh, at the peak of uh, April 20, the uh, more or less 80% uh, of patients were treated in, the, um, in, the, uh, 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 in their own 
places. Um, regarding the testing capacity, the country uh, has increased over time the ability to test. Um, and uh, here you can see that uh, almost 5% of the population has been tested uh, in uh, uh, um, almost two, uh, two months. And uh, uh, the, this is the, the, the prevalence that we have reached now is 0.37% uh, of the Italian population uh, in Italy uh, lives uh, uh, around 60 million people. Uh, again, here you have uh, the general picture of the evolution uh, of the use of ICUs um, uh, compared to the positive cases and uh, the hospitalized people uh, on, uh, uh, on the cases. So, as you can see, we have, uh, we have reached the peak of 12% of uh, 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 cases hospitalized and in ICU uh, in the uh, beginning of, uh, of March. And uh, now the situation, as you can see, is better and better. And 16% of, the, of uh, the people is hospitalized. 1% of, uh, of the people with COVID-19 is uh, in uh, an ICU uh, bed. Uh, but uh, the regional epidemiology was very different. We had uh, zones with high prevalence, uh, uh, Lombardia at first uh, and small uh, Valle d'Aosta. Uh, in the center we have some areas with uh, uh, what I call medium, medium low prevalence uh, uh, around 0.2-0.3% uh, 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 and the very low prevalence uh, in the, 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 uh, the, 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 the islands and the southern regions such as Calabria, uh, Campania, in which there is Naples, uh, and so Sicily and, uh, and Sardinia. So the situation was really, really different from an epidemiological point of view. And, the, uh, concent and we had a concentration of uh, cases, uh, uh, especially in the first part uh, of, uh, of the outbreak uh, um, in, uh, uh, in Lombardy region. And uh, uh, up to now, Lombardy region is the, uh, um, is the uh, region uh, with the uh, uh, vast majority of cases. And then Piedmont, Emilia Romagna, and, uh, and Veneto, uh, the region which uh, the prevalence is uh, higher. But also the lethality was different, uh, and Lombardia region had a, a really a higher lethality of the COVID-19 than uh, other regions uh, with uh, a significant outbreak of the, 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 the coronavirus, such as Veneto, Piemonte, and Emilia Romagna. This is the comparison of the actual lethality in comparison with the, 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 the people that uh, as dead for our respiratory diseases in 2017. Um, and uh, this is clear that we, uh, the, the, the how much the COVID-19 uh, as, uh, uh, as produced in terms of deaths, but also is it clear that uh, the lethality of the virus has been totally different uh, uh, region by, uh, by region. Um, so the issue is uh, how the regions has responded to the problem, uh, even if with different uh, um, epidemiology. And we have a look at that five major uh, variables, uh, five major tools of response. Uh, the testing, how they approach uh, the use of the test, um, how they have planned and restructured their own uh, hospital network, uh, the balance between hospital care and home care, the use um, of intermediate care and intensity of the use of ICT and digital solution to manage COVID patients. Uh, regarding uh, the, the ability to create plans, uh, the, the level of readiness of the Italian regions was very high in general, uh, 16 out, out of 21 regions has issued emergency regional health plans uh, quickly in a really few, uh, few days. Um, in terms of testing, uh, we can see the first differences. Uh, in fact, Lombardy region uh, that has uh, 10 million uh, uh, people living there has uh, almost the same number of tests provided by Veneto region that is much smaller, is a half. They have 5 million people. Then Emilia Romagna, uh, 4 million people, and Piedmont uh, that uh, is lower uh, than 3 million people 
living in, uh, in, that, uh, in that area. Here, we can appreciate the differences. Veneto has tested that almost 7% seven, 7% of uh, the population. Lombardia was able to test only 3.5% of the, the population. And of course, the southern regions uh, had less uh, pressure in uh, uh, using tests to understand where COVID uh, uh, um, uh, patients uh, were in the territory because they, uh, they had, fortunately, very uh, fewer uh, ones. So, uh, first huge difference in, uh, in the, the testing of the population. Second difference in, is in the availability of ICU beds. The red line, look at the situation of available ICU beds for 100,000 inhabitants before the, the COVID outbreak and after the guidelines of the Ministry of Health, some regions were able, able to uh, uh, double the number of ICU beds, also transforming uh, some operating rooms uh, in uh, ICU stations or creating, uh, you know, novel uh, beds also in uh, um, uh, field hospitals uh, uh, immediately uh, uh, constructed uh, very close to the regular hospitals. Uh, as you can see, Piemonte had, had a very large increase uh, uh, significant also in, uh, in Veneto, in Bolzano, in Trento, uh, less in Lazio region, for example. Um, also Lombardia region, that was uh, the region with the, the major prevalence, uh, um, they were able to, uh, to, to, to implement the number of beds, less than uh, 50, uh, 50 percent. And uh, this is the, uh, of course, uh, uh, the impact, uh, the level of saturation of ICU beds uh, uh, as some peak, as a peak in March 21st, uh, under Five percent under five percent means that some of the uh, Lombardia patients uh, in ICU were hosted in other regions uh, and also in some hospitals in Germany. Some of uh, our patients uh, arrive in the Cologne, in the hospital of Cologne, uh, in uh, in Germany to be treated. Since Lombardia uh, beds were completely full uh, in terms of uh, ICU, what is interesting also is to see. Uh, the, uh, uh, as a consequence, uh, the different approach uh, in hospitalizing, hospi uh, um, hospitalizing patients. In fact, uh, while the Lombardia region uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, at the end of March was hospitalizing almost 50% of the patients, uh, in Veneto uh, they, were, they were hospitalizing only 20%. Of patients. This is another huge uh, difference. And uh, this is a broader view. Uh, here you can see more and more regions uh, in another part of the country. And this chart is uh, useful to appreciate uh, the, the mean uh, during the long period from March 1st to March, uh, uh, to April 28, uh, in terms of uh, number of patients treated in hospital. In Lombardy, the average was 52%. Uh, in Veneto, the average was 23%. Uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia, 20%. Emilia Romagna, 40%, and so on. So here we really can see uh, some uh, uh, huge differences in approaching uh, the care of patients with same uh, characteristics. Here you can see another difference. It's related to the, let's say, the intensity of the use of the intensive care units beds uh, in comparison with the patient that has been uh, hospitalized. Here you can appreciate the, the, the behavior of the Veneto region. In Veneto region, when a patient uh, arriving in a hospital, usually goes in a hospital to be hospitalized in an ICU, uh, you know, uh, the hospital is considered more or less, uh, you know, the, 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 the last chance. And uh, in, in, uh, these, uh, this data shows that Lombardia uh, was unable to recover the same percentage of patients in ICU when the patients arrive in the hospital. And um, these are probably the, the, the level of lethality that we have uh, experienced in Lombardia is also due to the the data that you have seen before regarding the 
intense use and saturation of ICU beds, but also is probably due to the ability to manage patients in, in an early uh, phase of, of the uh, of the um, of the illness uh, in their home and managing the transition more accurately in Veneto than in Lombardia or in Lazio or in Emilia Romagna. So trying to connect all these dots, uh, we uh, were able to create uh, and to you know, uh, identify three different uh, uh, potential approaches um, that are different because uh, of their different approach in testing, in the use of hospital, in the use of ICU, in the use of primary and community care, and in the use of the digital solution. The hospital center approach, of course, is based on an intense use of hospitalization, more than 40% uh, of patients in hospitals, so the regions inside of this group um, as mainly uh, uh, treated patients uh, at the hospital level. And also, these are regions in which the percentage of ICU uh, hospitalized uh, 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 patients uh, uh, hospitalized in ICU is between 13 and 14 percent of the total hospitalized patients. Uh, as you can see, the, the, the situation is different uh, in the community home approach, uh, in which uh, the hospitalization uh, is uh, much lower, uh, lower than 20 percent, uh, with higher intense use of uh, ICUs. Uh, in these uh, regions, uh, uh, the use of uh, the digital solutions, uh, for example, uh, apps, uh, platforms uh, to manage uh, uh, patients at their home with symptoms or uh, COVID patients uh, is totally different uh, in some regions such as Veneto in the community home approach and in other regions that have followed a more balanced approach using both uh, hospital resources and community care uh, and primary care uh, resources. Uh, the, 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 the synthesis is that we were able to allocate uh, the 21 regions in three different groups uh, and we have proposed little by little to uh, the Italian community uh, these, uh, this kind of uh, analysis uh, and we have uh, reached confirmation about uh, the, uh, let's say, this kind of uh, uh, um, way to disentangle the, 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 the response of the regions uh, um, to the uh, COVID uh, uh, emergency. So here you can see that Lombardia, Liguria, and Piemonte as other regions, uh, as well as Lazio, for example, in the center of the country, had a hospital-centered approach. An integrated approach was followed by Emilia Romagna Mark and Toscana that uh, are the central north part of Italy uh, with a similar uh, uh, prevalence of cases. Uh, the community home approach uh, has been followed by Veneto, Trento, Bolzano, Friuli, Venezia, Giulia that is the northeast part of the country and some of the, 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 the southern regions also has followed this, uh, uh, this uh, approach. Um, just very, very quickly regarding the phase two that has been started uh, with, the, uh, with the end of lockdown on May the 4th, what we are seeing is that uh, regions uh, are reacting in this phase two, also uh, modifying their uh, healthcare planning, uh, even if uh, probably uh, not as quick as in phase one. And it's interesting to see during this, uh, 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 this phase that uh, in their own uh, um, regional healthcare planning, uh, they are following different approaches, uh, for example, in uh, uh, using hospitals and dividing uh, COVID hospitals from other hospitals that should be, let's say, dedicated to the uh, uh, normal care, let's say, to, to, to go back to treat uh, the, the patients uh, of, uh, uh, with other pathologies. So we have uh, at least three models uh, in which we have regions with uh, uh, a unique hub uh, with uh, one COVID hospital, such as in Marca region. Um, Lombardia and Liguria were 
there are multiple COVID hospitals, um, and in this case, the network is a sort of star without uh, um, uh, uh, the, the presence of Hub and Spoke. Hub and Spoke model uh, has been uh, chosen by Lazio and uh, Emilia Romagna uh, region. Uh, very interesting the approach followed by Liguria region in which they decided uh, uh, to have uh, more or less whole hospitals uh, with uh, um, COVID ward units uh, and few COVID free hospitals to be dedicated to uh, other uh, only to other patients. Um, just few comments to conclude this presentation. Um, as I said, uh, we were able to identify different ways to respond to the same crisis in the same country uh, by the Italian regions. Uh, they, these regions, uh, we, uh, were, we were able to allocate in three different uh, groups. Uh, depending by the response and what we have learned is that the response uh, was uh, strongly connected to the presence of specific assets in the region. As I said, Lombardia region is as probably the strongest uh, 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 hospital network uh, uh, in Europe, at least one of the strongest hospital network in, the, the U in Europe and they as used these uh, important assets. Uh, Veneto region uh, has invested for at least 10 years uh, in making the community care uh, more robust. Uh, in this contingency, probably the kind of assets uh, available in Veneto region were more fitting to the, the problem and uh, uh, the results that we were able to, to get from uh, their way uh, uh, of responding to the emergency was probably much more uh, effective. Nevertheless, uh, a progressive converge, we have seen a progressive convergence of the region toward a common management methodology, um, using in a more balanced way hospital, local and home assets. And uh, uh, finally, what we can see is that now, uh, with the uh, uh, post lockdown phase, uh, um, it's possible to, uh, to, to detect uh, different approaches uh, in the different regions. We are following uh, this, uh, this evolution, we are collecting data, and very soon uh, we will be able also to uh, provide a full analysis of phase two. Um, of, uh, uh, of the, uh, from a, a regional uh, point, uh, point of view. Um, thank you so much for your uh, patience. Uh, try to, you know, be as, sh a a as uh, uh, quick as possible, um, even if there was so much to, to say. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, uh, and this was a very in interesting insight of uh, you know how there is within a country so much diversity. Uh, while uh, waiting for potential questions from the audience, uh, I have already a few of them uh, for you. The first one is uh, while we have seen that you know in Italy the level of occupancy of ICU beds was quite uh, different from a region to another why there has been a choice to send abroad rather than to transfer within the country? Is it because of logistics? Is it because of tradition of you know, teams working together with uh, foreign teams? What, what is the, the, the rationale or the reason behind that? Mainly the reason was, uh, the first one was because of logistics. So, for example, um, in, in, uh, many of these patients have been moved uh, using uh, uh, higher planes, okay? Um, because it was impossible, for example, to move a patient from uh, Lombardia to Veneto. Because the situation in, in, in that phases uh, was totally unclear. So, the idea was no, not to use uh, some assets from other regions that could have a strong up uh, uh, outbreak uh, uh, since that region has no you know a huge buffer 
uh, of uh, ICU beds. Uh, for this reason, uh, has been used, uh, uh, for example, a few beds uh, in, in Germany, because Germany has a, a larger buffer in terms of number of ICU beds available. And uh, the two countries uh, were uh, totally uh, agreed on this approach. For example, we uh, in, uh, um, in some southern regions, for example, uh, Lazio, there were uh, beds available. Few patients were moved uh, at the Spallanzani Research uh, Hospital that uh, is in Rome and is dedicated to infectious diseases. Uh, but uh, uh, the, 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 the choice was not to uh, create, uh, you know, to reduce the buffer uh, in, uh, um, in, in the Italian regions because of the higher risk uh, of uh, an increasing of the uptake of the curve of the contagious. The situation in Germany was totally different, more, more under control than in, uh, in Italy. And so this is the way, the, this is why the decision to bring some patients uh, 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 in Germany or for example, in Sicily, we had few patients uh, moved by airplane, um, with, you can imagine, with kind of uh, complexity uh, in Palermo. So from Milan to Palermo by plane uh, to be hosted in a, a, a Sicilian ICU. More than move from uh, 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 Milan to Turin, Milan to Venice. Okay? Okay. So that, that's quite interesting because it shows that uh, whether you have a national system, it might be sometime uh, easier or more convenient, more uh, effective uh, to work uh, across borders and especially within the European Union. Another question that is often um, asked around the, the, the way the response was organized, uh, any comments in relation to the public versus the private sector? because this is not really covered by the study. And uh, we all know that, you know, there is always uh, different um, approaches, uh, different incentives uh, between public and private. And when I'm talking about private, I'm talking about the investor-owned, the private commercial sector, not the, for, for the private that is uh, not for profit that can be very much uh, assimilated to the public. Okay, um, this is a good point. Actually, Lombardia region is a region in which the presence of the private uh, investor owned is very relevant. Um, uh, both investor owned private, then uh, non for profit uh, private, uh, were involved uh, in managing the emergency since they are part of uh, the public uh, healthcare system. Uh, being accredited to uh, the um, by the regional health authority um, in Lombardia region, uh, the uh, investor-owned uh, private hospitals had the exactly the same contribution to uh, the uh, the emergency than the public hospitals uh, uh, in the in the region, um, and uh, actually. Uh, someone also in Italy has criticized the fact, uh, actually they, someone has tried to connect uh, the, um, let's say, the, 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 the problem of the response of the Lombardia region uh, due to the fact that there was so much private. So, but actually, uh, at the end of the day, um, the, the analysis that we are doing uh, and uh, that people is doing uh, uh, in Italy is demonstrating actually that uh, the problem was different. The problem was not to have, you know, public, too much private or too, too much public uh, in, the, in the system. The problem was not to, uh, you know, the, the lack of uh, uh, a strong community care infrastructure. Uh, so uh, the contribution of private hospital, investor in the private hospital was very relevant, uh, very well, taken, I have to say, and in this case, totally integrated with the uh, public health response mechanism. Yeah, okay, that's, that's very clear, and that's a very interesting perspective that on this, on this debate. 
Uh, there is a question about the fact that there is quite a large portion of people that have been hospitalized, at least in some of the region that you, you have um, shown in your slides, in regard to many other countries. So the, the, the question is, is uh, you know, do we have a, a reasons behind that? Is it because it's the tradition, it was the model that was, you somehow mentioned that a little bit, can you further develop that? And do you do you do we have any information whether the the high level of hospitalization of patients has somehow also uh, uh, participated somehow to the problem with uh, um, hospital acquired infections uh, uh, because of so many patients to be uh, hosted in uh, difficult conditions. Okay, the, uh, for the per quest, first questions, uh, mm, the, 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 um, the high intensity in the use of hospitals uh, is, uh, uh, as I said, related to, uh, you know, sort of ten tendency, tradition. Uh, uh, we, we know that our system is uh, hospital-centric in general. In some regions in which the uh, the, 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 the major assets were hospitals. Uh, the immediate uh, way to respond was to use that specific asset, hospitals. Okay. Um, th this is uh, probably one of uh, the, 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 the events that has created so much problems. Uh, in, uh, uh, in Lombardia region. Of course, uh, also to this issue is connected uh, the, the effects uh, uh, of uh, the diffusion of the contagion through the hospitals. Okay? <laughs> this has happened uh, specifically at the beginning of the contagion. We had two examples two hospitals, one in close to Bergamo, in Alzano Lombardo, and the other one was the first one in Codogno, in which actually the hospital was uh, really the, 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 the point of outbreak, of major outbreak of the, uh, 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 of the, uh, of the contagion. Uh, when they have realized this problem, they uh, create the red zone immediately, the lockdown in these specific, that specific areas. Um, um, actually, there is another point that is very significant. Uh, we had uh, the vast majority of casualties of deaths among the healthcare workers uh, in hospitals uh, because, uh, and in Lombardia in particular, because the intensity of the presence of patients with COVID inside of the hospitals were so strong that people trying to really, uh, you know, uh, uh, reduce the potential diffusion, uh, you know, they, they were able to sacrifice their, their own lives. And uh, I think that we really need to thank to these, uh, uh, to these people. Yes, and, and in relation to this, uh very acute situation in, in Lombardy. Do, do you have any lessons that can be learned about how the, the emergency has been handled? And uh, what has been the role of politicians versus the, the, the technicians in, in the response? You know, were the politicians the one that put the most uh, important role in, in, in uh, 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 mobilizing, you know, and finding solutions, or mostly it was the, the technicians that were on the front line and on the battlefield to make sure that uh, solutions were found and the, the politicians just in, in the back because that, that's not their, their role. Whatever, how, how did it happen? Uh, here in Italy in general, what happened is that uh, politicians uh, were uh, very slow in understanding uh, the situation. Actually, let's say relatively slow. They could be uh, a bit quicker in understanding uh, some risks uh, before patient one, okay? When the 
virus outbreak was uh, in China. But when uh, we had the first patient, the, fir the first COVID patient in Italy on February 21st, uh, immediately they realized the, the complexity of the situation and they had asked uh, a strong help to technical people. Uh, in Italy, uh, the guidelines uh, issued by the Ministry of Health uh, on March the 1st uh, and before some indications uh, issued uh, on February 24, 25, uh, has been totally supported by this technical commission, a multidisciplinary uh, commission uh, that uh, uh, was working for 24 hours a day uh, side by side with, uh, with politicians. And I had to say that politicians has followed uh, their indication uh, very, you know, uh, sharply. The things are changing now with phase two. Now it seems that uh, the, the relevance of the message, uh, the strength of the message from uh, the technical people, uh, you know, is, uh, uh, is less considered by politicians. For example, the, uh, the reopening of many businesses, restaurants, bars, uh, actually was not totally endorsed by the, 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 the scientific commission. Uh, and uh, uh, is the politics that is taking uh, the responsibility now uh, to, you know, to restart with business uh, activity and um, usual day, uh, day life uh, in comparison with the suggestion from uh, the technical group. But I have to say that the, the, the balance between technical people and, and politicians uh, was really on the side of technical people. Technical people as, uh, you know, the, 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 the probably a stronger role in this emergency. Okay, yeah. For, for the, when you have studied, you know, the various responses and because you are working on the management and health management, are there any specific lessons in terms of management for and practices or competencies that can be learned from uh, the various responses uh, in terms of uh, strategy that have been adopted? Um, let's say that... Uh, uh, from um, um, a managerial point of view, I, I think that uh, at first what we have learned is that we need managerial competencies. The huge difference uh, in terms of uh, readiness, uh, quickness in the, the establishment of the, the response uh, was related to the managerial competence available on site. And uh, I think this is something that should be learned uh, at first. Um, second, uh, the, I think is, uh, uh, what is very important is to have uh, uh, strong, feasible, and uh, ready to use uh, contingency plans uh, uh, for emergency at uh, national, regional, and local level. Veneto region, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, looking at the data and the, the documents, uh, was able to respond uh, uh, in a, let's say, smarter way because uh, they had produced uh, in the past uh, contingency plans, uh, very detailed contingency plans, uh, to be used in cases like this. And this is, I think, very, very important, uh, the readiness of the system. Okay, yeah, that's a that's very good point, a takeaway message that I will underscore. The other question that comes in many countries because of the crisis, you know, of course, a number of patients haven't been taken care of. Uh, so now that the what what will be the capacity to you know catch up the waiting uh, lines of patients uh, because at the same time you still need to keep capacities for a potential second wave of COVID 
And uh, on the other side, uh, we, we can expect that some patients that did not receive care or were afraid to go to the hospitals because of COVID have uh, a, a heavier load uh, and will be more complicated to treat. So how do you address this, this tension? Okay, um, again, here the response uh, is different region by region. In fact, as uh, you have seen uh, in phase two, uh, uh, eh, 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 at the moment, uh, uh, five out of 21 regions have uh, uh, a new hospital contingency plan. The new hospital contingency plan is for, uh, you know, facing this problem. How to manage non-COVID patients uh, in parallel with new potential COVID patients in phase two, okay? So some regions has very clear in mind what to do. And so they decided to dedicate few hospitals to as COVID hospitals. In some other regions, they decide just to have one COVID hospital, whatever. And uh, they have a plan to increase the productivity of uh, hospitals, of diagnostics, uh, you know, also investing in new resources, okay? In some other regions, uh, these contingency plans are not present. So I cannot give you, you know, one answer to this question because any region is really, you know, doing different things. But for example, Emilia Romagna has a, a very detailed uh, hospital, new, uh, new hospital plan. Um, and they have uh, also identified uh, new, you know, for example, for example, schedule for uh, outpatient visits uh, for diagnostics because uh, we have uh, uh, we have seen that we could experience uh, an increase in the waiting list uh, more than thirty percent in terms of length. That it's really too much since our waiting lists are uh, still very, very long. So, so that means uh, in a nutshell, you know, those who were working the most efficiently have be, uh, are already preparing to cope, uh, while those who were not working so, so well are going to agree, uh, be in a situation that's going to get it worse. That means in terms of differences between the the good and those who are not the, the, the you know the, the the best one of the class and the worst one of the class you 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 do you think that the crisis will increase the 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 the, the, the differences yes i'm i'm afraid yes because it's related to the the the, the first issue that i've mentioned uh, as uh, you know lesson learned is the management the quality of management we have uh, really a uh, huge variability in the quality of management, uh, region by region. We have uh, here north-south divide. Even if also in the north, uh, we can have different situations uh, because we have different traditions in healthcare management. And, uh, you know, the risk uh, is that this uh, situation uh, is going to, um, you know, to, to make it uh, worse to, to, to have... Uh, um, situation that uh, is going to create uh, more and more differences. Yeah, so this is really a big concern and I'm sure it is uh, not specific to, to Italy. One last question before concluding, it's coming, uh, it's coming from me, is that you, you have presented and it's a very interesting typology of three major, you know, health services models that uh, were in place. Uh, are you, uh, do you have the intention in the next steps to look these models with case mix adjusted case, you know, to, to have a case mix adjustment and see if there is different in outcomes or and in the cost, I mean, the resource mobilization in regard of the model, you know, to see yeah, which model has made the most uh, efficient in terms of uh, medical outcomes and uh, uh, lowest uh, cost uh, resource mobilization. Yes, this is the idea, of course, uh, now to, to make this kind of analysis, we need uh, uh, data from the medical abstracts, so uh, the administrative data of the hospitals, uh, because only in that way we can understand uh, uh, the, 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 the real situation. We, uh, th there are some data uh, now at the National Institute of Health uh, in Italy regarding the comorbidities. Uh, 
of people that uh, has been uh, 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 hospitalized uh, or anyway that, uh, the, that had the COVID-19. Uh, but at the moment are not available. When these data will be available, uh, our intention is, uh, of course, to, uh, to make uh, an analysis, to understand, uh, of course, to create the contingency model. Um, you know, what is worked out uh, and what should be make it better? Yeah, so that, that will be very interesting because, as you know, worldwide, people are thinking about you know, the different types of models for uh, organizing the service delivery uh, and the role of hospitals in these models. And the fact that within one country, you have more or less three models that have been uh, uh, exposed to a crisis that's going to be uh, an important element. Just a last question that came in, and it's an important one, is related to the behavior of people in regard to the hospitals. Do you have any clue or any information if uh, there is a, uh, because of the crisis and uh, people are, are fearful about uh, getting the COVID in, in, uh, if, if they are going to the hospital, if there's going to be a difficulty to bring back the beyond the technical, you know, the bottlenecks in the supply, if the demand side is going to change because people are fearful to go to the hospital. No, at the moment, I have to say that um, there was, um, you know, a positive acceptance uh, uh, regarding the situation by the population. And also, um, for example, the patient associations were very supportive. You know, there are very rare cases in which patient associations were were complaining about the impossibility to get some services, whatever. Also, even in, in a situation in which we know, and now some data are coming out, some analysis, uh, that we, we had uh, an increasing uh, of deaths, for example, in some, uh, for some pathologies, uh, in, uh, for uh, people with uh, uh, ischemic disorders, uh, cardiologic disorders, uh, we start to have, uh, you know, dramatic data. But uh, the perception of the population was that the situation was so difficult to manage that, uh, you know, all the attention should be dedicated to COVID-19. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, some, some other should uh, uh, wait. And there was, uh, you know, there wasn't a, a, any other option. But they are not afraid to go back to the hospital. Uh, let's say that during the period of COVID, uh, they were very afraid because we had emergency room totally empty. No one in the hospital. Now, I think uh, the mood is changing very quickly. And of course, it's changing uh, in that regions in which uh, it's clear that there is a new plan, that this hospital is not going to be COVID hospital. This other hospital is divided in two blocks. The block one is COVID, the other one is totally COVID free. So uh, now at the moment, uh, uh, in these days, these days, people is changing the mood. But in the past, uh, you know, yes, there was, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the people was unwilling to go to, go to the hospital, absolutely. Yeah, th thank you very much. So one key message out of that, that is also quite a global one, is that to restore the trust uh, when you have uh, epidemics, you definitely need to have uh, very well identified wards for treating the epidemics and that are not mixed up to, and uh, with the, the other one that are treating all the other patients. Just a few uh, highlights from your presentations and you are most welcome to, to complement one, uh, the, 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 the ones that I'm going to make. So four, four major messages. One is, of course, around the importance of implementation. You, you have demonstrated that when you have systemic, systematic measures in a country, uh, the implementations, that's what's going to make the difference. And it's so important to identify the differences in implementations to understand, you know, why there might have been differences in the efficiency of the same measures that have been uh, uh, recommended by national authorities. The other thing is that the crisis is also identifying, highlighting, underscoring 
the fact that uh, in, within a country, we have a lot of diversity in uh, clinical uh, culture and capacities. And therefore, you know, even though we always are looking and comparing national systems with national systems, the granularity to understand health services is probably not national, it's uh, regional, and the crisis is really highlighting that. The other one is uh, around the importance of uh, letting the technicians having the capacity to organize the response, especially when it is at the early stage, and that the politicians have to be behind them to back them up, to enable them, uh, rather than to um, uh, be in their way, if I can say. And the last one, which is important, of course, for all of us who are supporting the, the professionalization of management, is that when you have uh, professional managers, usually they have already pre prepared uh, the uh, uh, hospitals to face crises and they have contingency plans. Uh, and that will make also a big difference after the crisis, first to manage the crisis, but also after the crisis to have such contingency plans. Any other final thoughts or comments? And we will be closing this uh, webinar and I'll uh, thank you so much for your contribution and your insights. No, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation and for the opportunity. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, will be, uh, has been useful for, uh, for the others. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. It has definitely been very useful. Patricia, a few last uh, information and we, you have the closing of the webinar. Yes, thank you, Eric. Uh, Americo, thank you so much for the insights you've shared today. To everyone who attended this webinar, the recording will be available on the IHF website after a few days. Uh, we will notify you by email once it is available. We still have a few webinars signed up in the next few weeks and in June. The schedule is now on your screen and you can register. Just go to www.ihf-fih.org slash webinars. So we hope to see you there. In the meantime, please stay safe and healthy. Together, we'll overcome this crisis. Thank you again, Amerigo, for your time, for sharing your insights, and to everyone for joining us today. Please stay safe. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.